Hey, uh, this is an idea dump. Uh, I've been thinking about this. Uh, this shower boat idea for, I guess, a couple of months now. In the back of my mind, it's been floating around, and I've had a lot of ideas that I wanted to share with you, Ian, in support of Project Balin. I'm still not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I'm in Gur's room. I've gotten about halfway in, and I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to retreat. I don't want to get sidetracked, though. Um, yeah, this... These, uh, these plastic columns you're working with are interesting. Um, in some ways, it's, uh, let's see, is that, do I have a good eye over there? Um, it's, in some ways, it's not a good, uh, material for, for building, uh, plastic, that is, uh, you know, when plastic came around, we were sold on its wonders, and we certainly used the heck out of it. Uh, but as time has progressed, we've realized some of the flaws with it. Uh, you know, some of, some of the early plastics were toxic, and it tends to... Uh, yeah, it, it can be brittle. It breaks down, especially in the environment. Uh, into smaller and smaller plastics, and we're realizing the issues with microplastics, which especially carnivores um, can build up microplastics in their system over time. Um, <clears throat> I thought I would color code. Let's see, green could be wood. That makes sense. I don't have something to erase with. Do I? Nothing good. I guess I could use my sleeve or something. Um, plastic. I don't know. Maybe we should make plastic red. Okay. We could make uh, metal. I don't think I'm going to be using much of that. We're going to avoid metal as much as we can. But, uh, you know, certainly screws and nails are wonders. And I don't know if we're going to come up with something else. I guess rope. Rope's a good one. Um, so you're... Uh, what you're working with to kind of catch people up is taking two liter bottles... Uh, And uh, cutting them, I think you guys were cutting them close to the end of the curve on the side. Um, and I was thinking you guys could, if you want to use more of the plastic, um, you could conceivably cut way down uh, basically where the, the next curve starts. Um, you'd be making, you know, it would be more, more visible through it. Uh, it wouldn't be as heavy. You wouldn't be wasting as much plastic, but of course, um, we're, we're talking about the, the cutters as well. Um, and it, 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 let me just update you on that. The simple design could be, um, pretty basic. The, yeah, metal. I think, I think you might want to use straight razors, um, which I don't know. They have like an indent in the side usually, or a couple, and then, you know, this is the sharp edge there. Uh, and then, you know, there's sometimes holes in the middle or whatever. Um. Yeah, I think you can buy a box of those pretty easily at a hardware store or whatever. That'll all be lined up. Um, the old school straight razor, you know, disposable razors. Some of the box cutters use them. 
that style. Um, but I, I think what could be done with that is basically you need a handle, which could be a piece of wood even, or a stick, and it needs to get wider at the top. Um, oh, that should have been green. That's fine. It could be metal too, whatever. Uh, I'm thinking you know, at the top you need to saw in a groove for the plastic to come through. Um, uh, you know, that groove would be in the side of the wood. You'd bring the saw in and, uh, you know, so it's almost like a slingshot shape. And then, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it could be simp as simple as a couple screws on either side to hold that razor in place. And the wood should be built up over the front edge to one side. That could be cut out, you know, cut out the side so that the shape, and let me do this in green for the wood. Uh, from the side, this handle will come up and, you know, there'll be a, this is your handle. Um, and then from this side, there's this slot. So the, uh, the, the blade would sit down here facing this way um, so that there's a sharp edge there, uh, but also so that you have wood protecting it and that slot is small enough so that even a child's finger isn't going to you know, slide in there or, or touch the blade or whatever just safety feature um and the ones i've seen some of them t take extra uh extra wood basically on on the two sides uh that stick up and could be screwed down or something um one of them that i saw had a, a metal hinge so they actually they cut those top pieces off and then they attached them back on with some screws from the side. Anyways, but that that all could be made pretty simply and I'm planning to um, do some testing with a few of the different plans I saw with my dad. He's got a, a good shop in his garage and a lot of spare hardware and stuff. But, um, so yeah, the idea with that cutter is it creates a buffer this slot uh it creates a buffer so that um you cut the bottom end of the the bottle off so that that's gone and um and then you you notch you need to start it with some scissors or something notch a little edge off of there and then once you feed that in um the bottle sticks up so the the side of the bottle is is centered in this groove and you pull that through and then um i, I think it might be a two-person job because probably one person needs to hold the handle tight and stabilize the two liter get it started and the other person will be pulling the plastic cord through and basically it cuts this in a big spiral um, so that you can get feet and feet and feet out of one bottle of a pretty strong plastic cord, um, which could be used to tie things off. And um, if you hit it with a lighter or a heat gun or um, hair dryer, it uh, it get it it hardens. So if you do that to a knot, it'll kind of solidify that knot and melt it to get it together. It does. It can make the plastic brittle as well so you don't want to you just want to hit it lightly um, too much of that and it'll melt away and fall apart and lose its strength um, and in fact it, you may not want to hit all knots I'm not sure but yeah that erase is fine um, yeah I can leave that tool up there so yeah basically the bottle st sticks up here and there's the cap um Oh, I meant to get measurements and stuff, but that's not critical. So building with these, what you were doing is cutting them so they were just the tops, and you were stacking them um, over each other. 
and uh, what you had done is run tape that's a good other although tape is plastic uh, you had run tape kind of around the outsides um, to hold it together and you know these these columns I'm just gonna do this for shorthand these columns you're making um, don't have a whole lot of structural integrity they hold themselves up fairly well but i think you've noticed they tend to droop and sag um, i don't think you want to use them horizontally because gravity of course over time it, they really will just sag like ropes or something which could be a style you're going for but um i think you're going to want to use them vertically and there are a few options that i came up with to avoid all this tape um, one would be, uh, like a, a dowel down the center. Um, you'd have to have a pretty thin dowel. And of course in this Western world, I say dowel, but you may be using, um, natural branches. They'd need to be pretty straight. There might be reeds or something that are fairly strong. Um, I don't know, but you need something that obviously fits into the inner diameter of that throat. But what that would allow you to do is you could have a baseboard. Um, yeah, I'm on wood. You could have a baseboard that you um, drill holes into and uh, perhaps perhaps even uh, well yeah my point is to set set dowels in there what am I picking up that's black I must have set dowels in 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 those holes and then um, you might even be able to screw in from the sides maybe with a pre-drill uh, to hold those in place strong um, but properly spaced then you could just drop drop these plastic things in over and over without any tape or fasteners on the individual columns and um, if these are spaced properly they'll they'll butt edge to edge um, I was also thinking that you know with the yeah I should step back and speak more generally a second these these partition walls remind me of stud walls that we do in in um, cheap architecture these days where uh, they put a base stud for the wall there are the actually I think the edge studs usually sit on the base stud uh, they'll be the edge studs that stick up um, you know and then every 16 inches or whatever we'll put another another stud boy this is bad lines but okay so and then you know this openness allows us to come in and put in um, our you know our outlets for uh, power cords and run wire through here we'll drill holes and run wire through here um, and if they're external walls we'll fill in these spaces with insulation and stuff I from what I understand you're building something that's kind of an exterior uh, grade you want to reduce wind visibility um, and you know general like stuff blowing in and whatever but aren't too concerned with sealing it up if if you do want opacity these could be painted and um, you know you could just pour paint through these on the interiors um, that would use a lot more paint but it would be quicker uh, you know you have them like funnels just pour paint through and you could pour one into the next and um, 
but probably you just go at it with brushes because I think you'd use less paint. Although it wouldn't be as pretty when you're done because you get the brush strokes and some transparency. That might be cool because it might let a little bit of light through but still block visibility. Anyways, another pretty cool idea I thought of. Let's see, other, yeah, other is rope. That would be good. Um, if you have a rope that can fit through the neck of these, um, you could cut that rope into you know about six or seven foot segments tie a tight you know a pretty big knot at the end of the of the rope and um start dropping these funnels it's already open over that uh, and um th this would be an interesting hanging construction that would require no no real fasteners um just keep stacking them stacking them up um and i thought this actually could be an interesting partition like a be beaded curtain um if you you know in this case you would have at the top a single headboard um that would span your doorway and then on that headboard you could uh, drill holes large enough for those those ropes and then once you finish one line tie the the rope you know a knot off at the top and um yeah that would block a lot of visibility and these ropes would be you know several inches between but it still could be pulled apart easily and walked through um if you want visual barriers between rooms or you know whatever that might be an interesting way to do that and um yeah with a rod in the center or a rope uh the one kind of works bottom up and the other works top down but in either case you're not going to need any fasteners to deal with the bottles themselves um you know the rod would use gravity they, they would rest on that base plate and the rope uses gravity they they rest their weight you know from that top board um so yeah i'm thinking in general that your partition walls are going to be you know a, a piece of wood at the base uh, and you're probably going to want, you know, two by fours at the ends, I would imagine. Uh, and you're going to do similar at the top. Um, But yeah, part of what this is going to allow you to do is get um, screws in from the side to attach to whatever columns you have at the ends of these walls. I'm, I'm imagining you're building these partitions from column to column, um, and there's a couple ways to interface with that that I'll show you. But this will allow you, to, often screws are put down if, if you have a wood floor. And can screw straight down into the floor they'll do that uh, or with concrete they'll pull up rebar and attach it that way um but then also screwing from the inside of these two by fours to the outside wall or outside column you know a column behind it um there are easy ways to get these partition walls in place and then you'll you know you'll have your plastic uh, your lines of plastic in here um, and yeah it, with coloring these it would be interesting to paint them you know a rainbow of colors you could lay them all out to dry in the sun and then stack them in in color in color order so that you'd have rainbow stripes all around um, you could certainly paint them 
the uh, colors of Peru's flag or, or other things. Um, green for the environmental associations, whatever. Um, so yeah, partition walls, another thing I wanted to share. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the boat because uh, I don't know what flotation you're going to use often. Oh, this would be another. A lot of boats now are made to be, you know, monolithic. Um, boy, that looks more like a toilet than a boat. Um, it, monolithic fiberglass design. Um, or something strong that the forces are all contained within the single shell and distributed. Um, I'm worried that a makeshift uh, raft on the water over time is going to get a lot of forces from the sides and stuff. So I just wanted to recommend screws instead of nails. Um, if you think about nails uh, with these two by fours I've been drawing. Um, if you're, if you're attaching that, uh, you know, with a metal fastener through the wood into something behind it, um, whatever that may be, it might be a column back here. Um, the, okay, to look at it from the side. So here's your two by four and here's your your other wood wall you're screwing into or whatever column whatever um from the side that and there's the head that nail or screw coming in through here um this is mainly strong against shear force um you know that is if 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 these are pushed in different directions it's going to be really strong because this metal is not going to just cut or or break in the side it can be you know it can be bent uh to torque um but what i'm concerned about is if you have shaking and shifting in all directions you can get pulling and nails are not strong to being pulled straight out Screws are nice because they, you know, they're teeth that spiral in, um, teeth into the wood and have a really strong bond that they form. Um, and this joint isn't going to move and flex as much. So anyways, that's just the recommendation for screws rather than nails. Um, I worry that if, if your general plan is to have like a uh, flotation, um, and, and honestly, you might want to look into barrels. Um, I've seen a lot of like kind of pontoon style flotation rafts that use barrels strapped together um, that are pretty effective. But again, my concern with this is, uh, you know, if you if you build a wood platform that's made with a lot of small boards on a a bunch of separate flotation devices like this with shifting and waves and everything there's going to be a lot of lateral forces and um stuff's going to be getting pulled and torqued and twisted and um yeah, it, it might be really nice to have one big solid base to work off of, wh whether that's uh, something reclaimed, a big metal plate. Metal isn't ideal, but the problem with wood is you're going to have all this separate construction. Um, like I said, everything's going to shift around, and I'm worried that if you're going to do a kind of a standard re rectangular frame with support columns and partition walls that all that's going to be shifting and the joints are going to break apart and stuff. Um, what else? Um, but 
yeah, my general thought was if you can build a pretty simple frame, maybe out of four by fours uh, that are four to six feet apart, um, and uh, you know, you might have baseboards with that. Basically, constructing a cube um, and uh, then you can have, you know, kind of beams across and you can do some roofing options and stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can see how with a lot of torquing and twisting, all these joints are going to be pulling at each other. That's enough on that. Um, Yeah, four to six foot spans, and you know maybe you try and uh, with these support columns, then you're filling in with your plastic partitions, um, and you might have doorways and in places and stuff. Um, for the roofing, I'm not sure if you want to try and collect rainwater, but it crossed my mind that. These essentially could be used as funnels if turned upside down. Um, again, with a base plate or, you know, with a baseboard with holes appropriately spaced drilled into it, um, you could build these nose down coming up, you know, like this. And uh, you could actually have water flow through there. Um, I don't think it's very effective. You might rather have plastic tubing or plumbing, um, and especially for collecting a large surface from the roof, you might want just big plastic sheeting that gathers in uh, the center or the corners um, and have barrels there to collect rainwater. I think you're probably going to have different rainwater that's used for different purposes. You might even want a water tower of some sort. Um, that would be really effective for um, the showers because, of course, rainwater would be clean enough for showering. And um, you could even have an open-topped water tower that helps collect rainwater. But you could also collect it from the other roof areas and, and pump it up. Um, you might even be pumping water from the river um, and running it through some low-grade purification into that. I think if you have purified drinking water, that may be contained separately from the like wash water because you need a different level of cleanliness. What else was I going to say? Oh, um... If you're building, if your columns are corner to corner um, with this basic design, what you, oh, I was going to take photos of this stuff and I failed. Oh, well, um, I could make extra sketches later if it's helpful. Oh, this probably end up, up too long. But, um, what was I going to say? The partition walls, oh. If your columns are to the corner, okay, looking top down, you're going to have these maybe four by four columns um, intermittently spaced, however they are. And um, again, you're going to have these smaller partition two by fours that are running in here between them with the plastic columns. Um, however they're made, and, uh, yeah, so you've got the screws coming in, kind of from, maybe it's from the sides at an angle, um, and you might want to pre-drill drill those holes, it, uh, a small pre-drill helps it feed straight, and it, it teethes in more cleanly, it doesn't have to push the wood and work so hard to get in, ends up quicker and easier too, um, yeah, but by doing these frames, I think you're going to hold those columns in place well. Um, oh, hey, girl. 
nice of you to join me. Um, yeah, partitions around. Um, lost my train of thought. The oh, another okay. So th these essentially you're putting partition walls between the columns. The columns are your load bearing, and your your partition walls um, float like this. Another, and then your corners are those columns exposed. Another thing that might be nice, uh, especially if you have round columns or something, but it's not really important. They could be square columns um, or even a mix, whatever. If they're inset uh, a little bit in the uh, platform... Oh, come on, girl. That's a, that's a functional... Explore up there. Um, if they're inset, uh, you could run the run the partitions outside of them so you might have one of your partition walls here and they might butt to the side of that and run this way um the advantage of this is from the outside you're getting these plastic columns even closer to the corner of course another thought i had um, is again if your platform's larger uh you could put the partitions in between them like i was talking about but also you could either hang with rope or run uh with dowels either way a line of those those plastic columns around your support columns so then instead of seeing the support columns you see more of these plastic columns i don't know i i kind of like the idea of uh focusing on the reuse and repurpose aspect we had a big push for recycling um, in the 70s that was pretty effective. But of course, that's only a portion of it. We don't want that stuff to go into landfills. It just makes no sense. We want to reuse everything we can. But there are other R's. Um, you know, we've now used reduce, or we've now added reduce and reuse. Um, obviously, if you can get away without ever getting the plastic in the first place it's best um if you can consume less plastic by reusing the same plastic it's it's um it's almost as good recycling it so that you know that takes energy but it it puts the it not only puts the materials back to use but it also keeps them from ending up in the environment and of course we know there's more ours now and repurpose um repurpose is really the one we're probably talking about here uh and i like the idea of you're you're trying to tackle this problem of the plastic just showing up as litter in the environment um but you're in a way displaying its its reuse as a way of you know getting it out of the environment and putting it back to use and you know turning a negative into a positive i like all that stuff what else is there reduce reuse recycle oh, that's different format non-parallel syntax uh, repurpose yeah anyways um, yeah, I, if you make progress on this or think of other things that you want my help on, Ian, let me know, certainly. Um, I, my thoughts, I'm sure this isn't all of them that I've had. Um, I probably should take better notes, but then it's less organic. So whatever, drawbacks, trades-offs. Um, yeah, I'm certainly interested I think this shower boat idea is interesting and and I'm interested in if you'll make progress on that and um, any other updates on projects Balin uh, would be interesting I haven't seen a lot recently I, I assume you guys are busy with uh, a range of, of tasks because you're 
your projects touching on you know infrastructure issues community issues environmental issues political governmental you know all that stuff so um and i know cleanup's a big part of it uh education's a big part of it yeah all of that is is cool stuff that i'm happy to support and uh yeah let me know if i can help you out anything else uh, i need to get at some other stuff probably get back to cleaning spring cleaning uh, i got a uh, building inspection next week so got to get some specific things out of walkways and such you go up and over go up and over Come on. can you do it can you do it there you go okay uh insert the predetermined catchphrase here <laughs>